because the sun, the sun passed water while we were working. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm calling the August 25th, 2015 Board of Directors meeting for MDX to order. Um, I'd ask former chair, Ms. Maritza Gutierrez, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if she would be so willing to today. Madam Secretary, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Cancio. Present. Mr. Ferre. Here. Mr. Gonzalez. Ms. Gutierrez. Here. Mr. Holland. Mr. Meyer. Present. Mr. Vasquez. Here. Mr. Walters. Here. Ms. Weinberg. Secretary Pago. Here. Treasurer Rodriguez Pina. Vice Chair Fano. Here. Chair Martinez. Here. We have a quorum. Now, I've had the opportunity to review, and I have just the approval of the agenda. Uh, we're going to keep it uh, lean and mean today. Um, I and Mayor Ferre have some personal matters that we need to deal with this afternoon, so we're going to set it as is, and I'm not making any changes to it. Any declarations of uh, voting conflicts, please? Oh, sorry, Mr. Right. Council. I apologize for sealing your thunder. Council. Uh, do any members of this board have any to report any conflicts with the, any item on the agenda? Which one? Thank you. I just heard the uh, phone. Is someone on via the telephone? Guess not. I am E, uh, Mr. Uh, Council. Citizens' comments. Are there any citizen comments today uh, that have registered, Ms. Secretary? Well, Mr. Concio, apparently we're only going to hear from the citizen comment. Uh, you're going to have to wait another perhaps 30 more days for more citizen comment. As you commented at the last meeting, it was 104 days that you had been here. We had heard one comment, another 30 days, and we had an opportunity to be publicly heard again, and no one's here again. You know, let me tell you something. I have been putting it in my Facebook that we have a public meeting three or four times in the last week, and some people told me that they're going to be here today, but you know, they are missing. They are missing the boat. And, and Lake, let me make this very clear. We welcome all citizen comments, pro or against us. We would like to hear all the opinions of our clients and our community. And no one who ever has something to say is going to be denied the opportunity to do that. And as Board Member Concio has said, it was 104 days from the last one, and hopefully we will not be 104 from the, time, the next time we hear from someone. Uh, item number two, please, Council. Approval of summary minutes. Has everyone had the opportunity to review the minutes, and does anyone wish to make a motion? So moved. Move, sec moved by Mayor Frey, seconded by Board Member Gutierrez. Any discussion? Hearing none. Discussion is closed. Anyone, anyone in opposition to the uh, minutes? Any changes need to be made? Hearing none, item passes. The executive director's report who will be handled today. Uh, Mr. Toledo, will you be presenting a report today? I will not be presenting a report. Uh, Javier regrets he's not available today, but wishes everybody uh, a good board meeting. And I believe I can speak for the whole board that we are wishing him very safe travels to Dublin, and we cannot be prouder of him as he continues his position with IBTTA, and it's a great honor to have him as our executive director as well as a nationally recognized uh, member of the transportation community. So you can tell Mr. Rodriguez I expect a very thorough report come in September. General Counsel's report. Uh, yes, uh, two items. We have the ETC litigation. Um, Boyster Road has been prepping uh, our witnesses all week. I mean, actually all month. And the uh, trial is supposed to start, start on September 8th. We have our last pretrial meeting uh, at the courthouse tomorrow at 1.30. So I don't think there will be any change. I think the case will start on September 8th. Second is the MCM bid protest litigation. Um, as I reported on July 17th, the uh, judge entered uh, and ruled in our favor and dismissed the complaint. On August 10th, he entered a final order with prejudice. 
That means MCM has 30 days from August 10th to file an appeal. And at the same time, we've also filed a motion to, uh, for our uh, fees. That's it. Um, is it it's going to be a bench trial, I believe, on the 8th, or is that going to be a jury? That's a bench trial. Judge Thornton. MPO representative report. Uh, Mayor Ferrer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since June 30th, we have not had an MPO meeting. Uh, the MPO continues to struggle basically with two major issues. One is getting the executive director. There is a committee that it was assigned. Um, the chairman wanted to do the selection and then come with a selected uh, member to the committee that was rejected. So the <clears throat> procedure now is that it, it comes through the committee with finalists, hopefully. And uh, the MPO then will then, in its totality, make that decision. Um, the other, the other major issue, of course, is the four corridors that are that the MPO is now studying to do a BRT. Um, in the in their original uh, report, they said that it could be done for 250 million dollars per segment, and of course that. That's very much in question, so we're, we're smack in the middle of that, and uh, I will keep you informed. Thank you. Thank you for that thorough report, Mayor Frey. The Treasurer report will be deferred, Marie, until the September uh, 2015 meeting, if that's acceptable. Thank you. Committee reports. Um, Ms. Gutierrez, I believe most of the, it are the items that are involved, the committee already action items on this, is that correct? Then we will deal with them if it's acceptable at, uh, as part of the agenda. Very good. The consent agenda, please, uh, Council. Oh, um, yes. Uh, Actually, okay. Council, before we, I apologize, Council. Uh, I'd like to recognize the arrival of, of Board Member Luz Weinberg. Thank you very much for arriving. And I believe we can verify the issue, the question you need to ask as well, Council. Do you have, do you have any conflicts on any item on the agenda? Okay. Perfect. Consent agenda. Travel right. approval and ratification. August 18, 2015, trip to Orlando, Florida by Executive Director Rodriguez to, tar to participate in a panel at HNTB's Think Infrastructure Forum. September 21st, 2015, trip to Orlando, Florida by Executive Director Rodriguez to attend the Florida Transportation Committee Commission tolling workshop. October 18th through the 20th, 2015, trip to Cleveland, Ohio by MDX Board Member Weinberg and Executive Director Rodriguez to, to attend the IBTTA New Media Communications and Human Resources Workshop. And the final, item B, September 24th to the 25th, the P3 Pipeline, a forum for, a forum for the private sector, attended by Board Member Walters. These are items on the consent item. Does anyone have any questions or objections to them? Hearing none, the, all the items per, per, uh, pass unanimously. And may the record reflect that Treasurer Rodriguez Pina has arrived. My apologies, uh, board members, for my delay. It's the first week of school, trust me. Everyone was <laughs> somewhat delayed today. Regular agenda item A, council, please. Board member Rodriguez Pena, do you have any conflicts on the items? Okay, we move forward. Item A, MDX procurement. Uh, uh, this is Al Gonzalez. I'm, I'm on the phone. I just want to say that I have no conflicts in any of the items in the agenda. Item A, MDX procurement contract number RFQ 15-07, MDX work program number A3629.051, construction engineering and inspection services for State Road A36 interchange modifications at 87th Avenue, endorsed by the Operations Committee on August 18, 2015. Approval of the Technical Evaluations Committee recommendation to select the number one ranked pro proposer, A2 Group Inc and authorize staff to negotiate and enter into a contract for a not to exceed amount of $5,789,541. Mm -hmm. Do I hear someone that wishes to move the item? Moved by uh, Ms. Gutierrez. Anyone wish to second it? Seconded by Mr. Rodriguez Pena. Now it's open for discussion. We'll uh, who is going to be speaking on behalf of staff, Mr. Toledo? Uh, Chairman Martinez. Uh, this item was thoroughly discussed on the operations committee, and I believe most of, or all of the board members here were present. If anybody has any questions, uh, Helen can address those specifically. Um, it's really up to the board if they want to re, you know, go through a summary one more time. Does any of the members that were not present at the operations committee need a further briefing at this time? 
Hearing none, what is the recommendation of staff and of the operations committee at this time? The committee, uh, according to uh, this, this item was endorsed at the operations meeting on August 18th. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, item is closed. We have had a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, aye as well. Item passes unanimously. Item B, council, please. Item B, MDX procurement contract number RFQ 15-05, MDX work program number A3628.069, materials, engineering, and testing services for State Road 836 operational capacity and interchange improvement projects. Endorsed by the Operations Committee on August 18, 2015. Approval of Technical Evaluations Committee's recommendation to select the number one ranked proposer, Amec Foster Wheeler Environment and Infrastructure, Inc., and direct staff to negotiate unit prices and enter a contract for not to exceed contract amount of $747,880. Moved by Vice Chair Fano, seconded by, seconded by Ms. Gutierrez. Item now is open for discussion. Uh, Mr. Toledo, who will be presenting for staff? If there is a need for one. Uh, like the previous item, this, uh, this item was endorsed by the Operation Committee on August 18th. It was discussed with uh, most, of, if not all, the board members that are currently here present. If you have any specific questions to the item, um, Ms. Cordero can also address those. Does anyone from staff have any, any, excuse me, strike that. Does anyone from the board have any questions that need to be answered or any members that were not at the Operations Committee wish to be uh, rebriefed? Hearing none, the item uh, discussion is closed. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. I apologize, uh, Council. May the record reflect that uh, Board Member Holland has arrived as well. It's a pleasure to see you, Robert. Good to see you. I hope you had a good summer. And, Ms. Council, if you could ask him the conflict question, please. Uh, Board Member Holland, do you have a conflict with item C, D, or E? Thank you very much for that. Item C, please, Council. MDX procurement contract, MD, MDX 14-04, toll collection system, call center, back office, and collection services contract with Credit Protection Association, Inc., endorsed by the Operations Committee on August 18, 2015. Approval of contract renewal for three years with an estimated cost for services of not to exceed $27,129,739. Anyone wish to move the item? Moved by um, Board Member Gutierrez, seconded by okay. sorry, by seconded by Board Member Myers. Uh, item is now open for discussion. Mr. Toledo, is there any information that needs to be related to the board that was not at the operations? Not at this time, but if any of the board members have any specific questions or concerns, we are Mr. Andrick and Ms. Cordero can address them. Does anyone have any questions? Ms. Gutierrez, are you, this was thoroughly vetted at operations as well. That's what I like to hear, and that's what we all love to hear here. So I will close discussion now. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing no opposition, item passes unanimously. Next item, council, please. Item D. Joint participation agreement with FDOT for the Dolphin Park and Ride Transit Terminal Facility Project, $800,000. Endorsed by the Operations Committee on August 18, 2015. Approval of supplemental joint participation agreement number one between FDOT and MDX for, for the funding by FDOT of design and project development services for the Dolphin Park and Ride Transit Terminal Facility Project. Anyone wish to move the item? Moved by Chair Vice Chair Spinal, seconded by Board Member Gutierrez. Any discussion on this, Mr. Toledo? Again, this was endorsed at the Operations Committee on August 18th. This is the JPA for the for DOT to fund the addition an additional eight hundred thousand dollars for MDX to continue the development of the Dolphin Park and Ride. For those who are not present at the Operations Committee, does anyone have any questions? Ms. Weinberg? No, no question. Oh. Just if you don't mind, Juan, uh, just giving me the thirty second summary on Ms. would that be from you or from Ms. Cordero? No, this will be from me. Um, basically, uh, in June, we approved the first J uh, JPA for the 300000 that got us started on the environmental study associated with the park and ride that we're developing for MDT out at Northwest 12th and approximately 122nd Avenue. 
this second JPA is uh, DOT will be funding the design concept development and the RFP development for to finish out the the concept stage uh, subsequent to this we we will be coming back hopefully before the end of the year with a J, with con with agreements with with DOT and MDT for the construction funding to be able to build the project um, this is an effort that you know we, we were we joined with MDT and DOT to try to accelerate this project and bring it and uh, and deliver it to two years ahead of schedule that was my question on next phase. So we're looking still at end of the year. Yeah. Good. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, of course, uh, Board Member Cancio. I would like to make a comment. Of course. You know, when I was a county commissioner about 13 years ago, and we approved the Beacon Lake, one of the issues and one of the recommendations and was approved to have a one road from 122nd Avenue, from 25th to 41st, to try to take some of the traffic from West Dade to the Turnpike through the 40, 41st. I have been talking with the Ingeniero Cotarello from uh, Miami Dade County. I have been talking with Alina Hudak. That happened 13 years ago. You know, when Armando Codina and the, that was approved, maybe it was 70% of that park have to be completed before they were able you know, to make that road. But that road now, if we're going to do the 122 Avenue for this parking, going to be very essential to have that link from 25th to 41st, and from there, we are able to get you know, to the Turnpike. I would like that MDX maybe send maybe some letter or something to, to Miami-Dade County to see if we are able to finish something that was supposed to be done about maybe seven or eight years ago, okay? Because now the owner of that project is a prologic. It's not the Armando Codina, because I spoke with Mr. Codina, he told me, Pepe, I saw that project some years back. Mr. Toya, go ahead. Mr. Gonzalo, in coordination with DOT and, and Miami-Dade Public Works, DOT is also developing a, a truck park and ride, w which includes the study of extending 122nd Avenue from Northwest 12th to the north. Part of the, uh, parts of that construction is included within the scope of the construction that we'll be putting out, and then DOT would be completing that as part of their truck and ride uh, development. So the, the intent of all these projects is to have a connection from Northwest 12th, at the very minimum up to Northwest 25th, and then beyond. Okay, thank you, sir. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, discussion is closed. We have had it moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. I as well. Anyone opposed? Hearing on the item passes unanimous, unanimously. Next item, Council. Item E, the last item. Project spe specific agreement with FDOT for the joint procurement, CEI, and design build services for st the State Road 836, I-395, and Midtown Interchange Improvement Project, 23400000 endorsed by the Operations Committee on August 18, 2015. Approve all this project specific agreement between FDOT and MDX for the State Road 836, I-395, and Midtown Interchange Improvement Project. Is the item, do I hear uh, someone moving the item? Moved by Chair Gutierrez, seconded by, seconded by uh, Board Member Weinberg. Um, the item is now open for discussion. Mr. Toledo, if, who would be discussing this item on behalf of staff? That would be me, sir. Um, this, this item was endorsed at the Operations Committee on August 18th. This agreement with DOT is really the final piece of our commitment when we put out the work program a year and a half ago and a year ago. This is the, the project that joins the final leg of the 836 improvements from Northwest 17th to the east, and it combines it with the DOT project for I-395 and I-95 so that we can jointly bring this project together and deliver it with minimal impact to our customers. The agreement spells out our funding responsibilities as well as, as, well as DOT's responsibilities, and it also discusses the parameters of how we're going to be contracting with the best value proposals and how we're going to be managing the project. Does anyone here? Mr. Walters, of course. Um, I I admit, I, I didn't understand this item when it went to the Operations Committee, and, and Juan took some time before the meeting and explained it to me how this piece fits in with the big picture, and I, I appreciate that, Juan. 
Well, and I, if I recall correctly, the Operations Committee uh, comment was made that the whole total project will be presented to either the Board or the Operations Committee in the future. I'd like to see how all these pieces fit together and, and what exactly the project is. Will that happen? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll work with our staff and DOT staff, and what we'll do is that we'll, we'll combine the project. It's, a pre it's pretty big to show on, on a small board, so we'll try to break it up so we can show it, perhaps in a presentation format where we can give you, where we can give you a good detail of, of, you know, either moving east to west or west to east, but you can see the entire layout of the project, including the, uh, the DOT components and as well as the, uh, the MDX components, and we can, we can more than likely bring that to the board next month. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing no other questions, the, I will close discussion. Item has been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye as well. Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, the op item passes unanimously. Uh, council, the first information item is the procurement report, correct? Who, is yes, there any, does, does anyone from, the report was presented to us, does anyone on the board have any questions related to that, Mr. Clare? Mr. Chairman, we usually put these in for informational purposes. If anybody has any specific questions to any of those reports, we can go ahead and answer them. Otherwise, they're there for your information. Very good. Uh, the next item is the communications report. Um, does any member of the, uh, the board have any questions related to that? I do, sir. Go ahead, Vice Chair uh, Fanel. Thank you, Chair Martinez. How are you, Mario? Good, Board Member Chair. Um, back a while ago, we had asked for a comprehensive report on communications. Now it's more important than ever. I just have a couple of questions. Here you say attended community events throughout the county. Could you let us know who and give us some examples of that? Sure. We have a regular um, an event. <coughs> excuse me, a regular event at the um, government center in downtown that we attend um, monthly. Um, they've allowed us to have a table. One of our subconsultants from GCA, um, EV Services. Um, is the one that provides the staffing for these tables. And what we do there is we answer questions, we hand out project information, and we have SunPass activation events uh, where people can activate their, their SunPass, uh, a SunPass Mini. Um, when they activate it, we would give them the Mini for free. We also do various events throughout the county with the auto tag agencies. Um, it was an idea brought up by our customer service uh, group that they said, um, a lot of people are calling with questions and they're usually standing at these um, auto tag agencies. So we now have coordinated with, I want to say every single agency within the county and we regularly go from one to another um, throughout, the, um, throughout the year. Do we, is that your team? Yes, the team, correct. Okay, another question. When it said um, to develop and begin public education campaign, about the dividend program. Can you give us some examples of that? Sure. Um, we have been with our consultant, um, Common, Gro Common Ground MGS, uh, we have been finalizing a lot of the um, themes that we presented back in May for the educational campaign, the safety, the road rangers. So we've been fine tuning what that message is. Um, along with the dividends program, once the board took action um, to reopen the, the enrollment, we wanted to make sure that the community was aware when they can enroll, where they can enroll, and when's the last day. So we have been developing and then pushing that product out um, throughout um, June and July, and now into August. Six more days, right? Uh, six or seven. The 31st? The 31st, yeah. I'd like to say that I brought it to the last meeting, to the operations meeting. There was a little stick it on the yes, Sunday Miami the Herald. Herald, which I thought was pretty interesting. It Thank sort you. of popped up. So I Thank congratulate you. you on that one. Thank you for answering my questions. Not a problem. Thank you. I'm sorry, I got to turn on my mic. Um, uh, board Member Vasquez, and then, because you, you raise your hand first. Board Member Vasquez, and then Board Member Weinberg. Go ahead, Javi. I would never. Oh, uh, you're such a gentleman, Mr. Vasquez. I was actually just pointing at him. Oh, so that you <laughs> and she was being polite pointing at you. But so while I have the, the microphone. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, um, Ms. Weinberg. No, I do want to note uh, that I had an opportunity to meet with Mario and Bernie on um, soon after your appointing me chair of uh, this, uh, I think, very, very important committee that now comes at a critical time for MDX. And I was very, great questions, um, Fanny. It, it's, uh, it's a great time for MDX, and I think we're in very good hands with our team. Um, we have a, a good plan in place for where we want to be over the next 12 months, particularly coming into the uh, next legislative cycle. 
and we're doing some really great things. And uh, we're, we'll, the board will start to see a lot more of, uh, of what we do because that is certainly a, a goal of ours, just to keep the board more informed of what we are doing, because our team's doing really a lot out there. Uh, they were a little too humble, in my opinion. So it's time, it's time to really start to um, shine and let the board uh, know exactly what we're doing. Um, and we have, I think, had a question on the dividends program, which I think it's a very big part of, our, of MDX right now. So with that, uh, just thank you, Mario and Bernie, and uh, we have a lot of work to do, and we're gonna be seeing a lot of that. Yes, Mr. Vasquez, of course. Thank you. And if I could just piggybacking on the question and the comment on the dividends program, what kind of uh, registration um, numbers are we seeing? You're stealing my thunder. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to just get a report, a summary report on, in that regard. They asked, you can answer. <laughs> I'll, I'll reiterate it again, but go no ahead. No problem. Um, <laughs> we'll have a complete report in September with regards to an update on the dividends program um, to date. We have a total of um, more than 52,100 transponders within the, uh, the program. How does that translate as far as um, percentages? Is it a good number? Are we on our way? It far exceeds what we in initially anticipated um, at the beginning of the year. Uh, we played a very conservative role, even just with the original Advantage um, program. We thought for the very first year, never having something like this um, in the nation, we figured maybe between 13 to 15,000 people would sign up. We well surpassed that with the first program. And now when the board took action to make it even easier for people, uh, we've seen that number easily double within, within a, a month and a half. Um, so I think the number that we have is, is very, very good, very good. Any, any other questions, Mr. Rathcott? Board Member Cancio. You know, Mr. Chairman, I give you a piece of paper today. I give to Mr. Diaz also. I see that, you know, I know that we want to have a new web page. But in the meantime, I would like that, you know, from 2011, we put it 2015, and also we try to explain, you know, to the user the money that we are spending, and, and also my issue about the signs. If the sign costs three or 4,000, I am able to donate you know, to MDX. <laughs> but I want that the people know the money that we have been spending in some other project that don't belong only to MDX. In that way, the people who are hearing or listening you know, through the, to the computers or to the web page know what's going on, please, okay? Well, and, and you know, uh, Board Member Cancio, that's gonna go right into my, my chair comments because one of the things we're yeah. going to push very hard in th this year is going to be more, com better communication. We're gonna be very aggressive and um, that's gonna go into, once we're done with this, I will explain what or I envision us going in that capacity, but you're right on page with where we're trying to go with that. And um, Mr. Diaz, although I wanted to wait until September, since, some of the board members have asked a little bit about the program. Why don't you tell them the other good news that you had shared with me that I wanted to wait until Mr. Rodriguez was here in September so we could give everything in one uh, one nice little presentation, but down that road, so go right ahead, Mr. Diaz, please. Um, some really, really good news. Um, PR News Magazine, it's a well-known um, industry trade magazine for public relations and advertising um, as well. Um, has informed us that we are a finalist in our Community Outreach Efforts Award um, for th their category this year. Um, out of a thousand applicants who submitted for the award, only 15 were shortlisted. We are one of the 15. And we, and some of the other finalists, finalists include Blue Shield, um, Health Insurance, Toyota, um, um, Lockheed Martin, um, Utah DOT, and also I can never pronounce the name of the watch manufacturer correctly. Toreg, Tor, Torneo. Tor 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 um, these are <laughs> okay. These are very large campaigns. Um, some of them are nationwide, and our recognition of a local outreach efforts um, in that kind of company, I think, um, really stands out to what we're doing here in our community and the innovative approaches that we're taking with the program itself. And that was um, 
everything that we've done is being considered from the grassroots level to all the advertising that we've been doing um, to be able to get the word out um, for, for the program. And I thought that was some, I wanted to save that for after po policies, gotten the information so we can give all of the numbers at once, but it was brought up today and I thought it was really exciting news when I heard it and I wanted to share it with the rest of the board. Um, Mr. Toledo, this is the cashback program will be going to policy so that we can get the final figures so that at our next board meeting we will be able to give a full report to the board. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, right now we're waiting until the enrollment closes on the 31st and then we'll be closing the books on that, reconciling all the data. Uh, the, the plan is to, to come through budget and finance next month. With all the uh, with all the information associated with the dividends program, as well as what the final results are going to be on what we're going to be putting out, or the recommendation for budget and finance to take under consideration. Any other questions on the communications report? Just a comment. Please go ahead, <coughs> Chair, Vice Chair Chafano. Mario, this is I received in the mail a package for the Advantage program. I haven't received anything in the mail for the dividend program. If you had already received um, information on the Advantage, you wouldn't receive a new dividends program. What you should have received is in your email account explaining that as a Advantage member, you would automatically be enrolled into the dividends program and that no further action would be needed from, uh, from the participant. When we changed from the Advantage to the dividend program, there was no way to hold off on sending out those Advantage notices because they were already out of business, so to speak. Um, the the dividend um, the discount card that went out is still valid. However, we did put a we did ask our vendor at the time to stop any further mailings. Um, unfortunately, that print house um, still sent some out, and we've since rectified that that problem to make sure that the, that didn't happen again. And I believe our our main vendor has even gone and found a new print house to make sure that that error doesn't happen again. Not a problem. Any other questions or comments on the communication report? Okay. My chair, comments. Let me begin again by emphasizing how humbled I was when this board honored me with the opportunity to be your chair. I have had the opportunity to sit on many different types of committees, but this is without a doubt the most prestigious and the most active community group of leaders I've had my opportunity to be with. This year our priorities are to first and foremost to fulfill our promises that we've made to our staff, to our clients. And our clients are our families, our friends, all the people that run our roads to make sure that we continue to do what we've done which is to make sure that the dollars that they've spent stay here. That they're spent on our roads that they're spent in our community to and to remind those who try to criticize us that that's what our job is. That we are all volunteers. That none of us got a magic sun pass when we became members of this board. That our mothers, our fathers, our children our, all spend the same amount on those tolls as our clients. And that is one of the primary things we need to do. But our dollars are successful. In the next, between now and 2020, we are going to create more than 10,000 jobs here in Miami-Dade. Those are going to infuse dollars into our community that are going to help our community continue to grow. Projects that have, our projects that are already in place that are going to begin as of November of this year for several of the projects that have already been established, built for. By the end of this year, by the end of this year, five projects, this physical year, five projects will have already been either procured or under or in working. That is what we've done extremely well. We are efficient and we are effective at how we do things. What we also need to do and we need to make it a priority is what do we do next? Where do we go from here? I would like to commend Chair Gutierrez for creating the Think Big Committee. That committee is not going anywhere because the next challenge for all of us is where do we go from here when our construction projects are completed? What do we do next? The reality is that we could build eight-lane highways in both directions on the, on the Dolphin Expressway and it would not be enough. 
it would still have traffic issues. So we need to think on how we can work with our friends, with our partners, FDOT, Miami-Dade, and the state to facilitate ways that we can think out of the box and create better ways for our transportation system. Maybe not necessarily just for us, but for our children. I would much prefer to spend time at home or at work than on a highway. And to do that, we need to facilitate better transportation, and yes, better public transportation. Not in the operations capacity, but perhaps in other ways we could work with our brothers. Part of what I've done since I've become chair is I've met with many of our elected officials. I've met with Mayor Jimenez. I've met with Chair Montesino and others in an effort to let them know we are there to work with them. And I agree with Board Member Concio. We need to get our message out there. We need to say this is who we are and why we do this. The 10,000 jobs that we've created, the millions of dollars that we're bringing into the system, and here's the other real important thing. This is a transparent board. What we do here is for the community, not for personal gain and not for personal benefit or professional. We take time away from our schedules and we take time away from our families to continue to work for the betterment of our community. As we go on this year, I intend to meet with every member of the county commission because it was a summer. I was hoping to have it done before today's board meeting, but I was unsuccessful. But we will continue to meet with them. We will continue to work on our communications. There is an old saying in the legal practice. When the law is on your side, you argue the law. When the facts are on your side, you argue the facts. When nothing's on your side, you just argue. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all, I have to do, all we have to do is argue the facts, because the facts are on our side. It is very simple. We are efficient. We are increasing our bond rating on every, at every opportunity. We are finding ways to return money. And I am proud to say that at, as of today, with seven days still to go, we are up to 52,000 members of our society who have registered for our cashback program. Now it's time, now the next step is to figure out what that, how that means, and I look forward to the reports that we're going to get at policy and for the full board in the future. I give you my word and my commitment that I will continue to aggressively represent this board, and I will continue to speak highly of how hard we work. We have nothing to be but proud of the efforts we have done, and I am following in the footsteps of two tremendous community leaders. In, uh, board Member Gutierrez and Mayor Ferre for the efforts and the challenges they went forth throughout the times they were the board. Uh, Ms. Gu uh, board Member Gutierrez with her th Think Big project and coming up with uh, the idea of the, of the cashback program. Mayor Ferre with his five-year strategic plan and his, uh, and his desire and his strength for what he wants to do. Both of them should be greatly uh, appreciated for what they've done for this community, and I am humbled to simply follow uh, your lead in what you've said. On a more personal note today, and I'm going to give a little high sign to Ms. Lowell, today's a really unique day. In July, I had the good fortune of celebrating my 10th wedding anniversary. That is nothing compared to what Mr. Ferre will be celebrating today. For any of you who do not know, Maurice Ferre today will be celebrating his 60th wedding anniversary. And I think anyone Maurice, I've had the good fortune and honor of working with you for the last eight years. Your wife deserves a medal for, for working for you, with you for 60 years. <laughs> uh, you know, un unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, uh, <laughs> let, let me just thank all of you for this wonderful gesture and on behalf of Mercedes and myself. When I, wa when I walked in today, um, uh, one of my friends on this board said to me, you know, my wife told me the other day, and at our anniversary. I should have killed you when I first got angry at you because <laughs> I, I would have been out of jail by now. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I'm going <laughs> to use that uh, tonight where all my family gathers. Um, 
And uh, believe me, my first words are of gratitude to God and then to Mercedes because it really, our marriage uh, for 60 years is really 100% her doing and very little of mine. <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor, I couldn't imagine a better way to start the year than to celebrate such a special occasion. And when you informed us all of it, I, it was basically unanimous desire for us to express our deepest congratulations to you and to a certain degree our sympathies to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> except, I accept both on her name and mine. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, this is a family that fights. This is a family that disagrees. We are. ...to work very hard to continue to represent and protect those of us who are out there. And we're never going to back down from making the tough decisions. And we're never going to back down from standing up for those tough decisions. And if ever there is a disagreement with anything I say, please feel free to disagree with me. I look forward to the debate. <laughs> At this time, I am looking for a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Agreed. And seconded. We adjourn. Thank you all. And again, again yeah. congratulations. Yes, hold on. I, I, did, I did want to make one comment, and I'm sorry to have it come after uh, this celebratory event for you, Mayor Frey. But I had the opportunity to last week, I, I pulled off of the 874 and I had to get some gas. So I pulled off and I pulled into the 711 right there on, on Kendall. And as I was pulling in, an MDX Road Ranger actually pulled in right before me. So I proceeded to get gas and, and I went over to the Road Ranger who had previously been helping out one of our commuters on the roadway. And I get out of my vehicle and I started to walk over to his truck and he looked at me a little bit confused of why I was walking over to him as his door and windows were closed. And I, I proceeded to, to tap on his window and he said, may I help you? I said, uh, yes, I, I actually, I'm a, I'm a board member with MDX and I just wanted to thank you very much for your service. And a uh, gentleman by the name of Alvaro, uh, very sweet, endearing, and very willing to, to communicate. And I share that story with you because I, I really encourage the board, I encourage our partners, staff, and, and the community at large, when you get the opportunity to please thank these individuals who are out patrolling our roadways day in and day out uh, for the safety and management of all of our commuters out there. Just wanted to share that. Thank you. That's a great story, and I agree, I couldn't agree more with uh, with Member Meyer for the excellent work our staff and our employees uh, do for us. That sometimes I think it goes unnoticed, and I couldn't agree with you more that the opportunity to really appreciate what we do is a great opportunity. And in the words of Pepe Cancio, I hope to hear from the public at our next meeting uh, when we discuss the uh, dividend program, or we'll see if we continue to only hear every 104 days. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Maybe everyone here or the, or the majority have you know Facebook. I put it you know in my Facebook every every week. Hey, we're going to have a meeting the 25th, open to the public, free parking. Come here, express your suggestion. But a guy told me yesterday or the day before, I'm going to be there. I say, you know, I'm going to see you. But you know. Thank you all for being here today and thank all board members. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.